and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. I'm Alicia, your host, and today we are going to talk about composers throwing shade at one another. So for those of you who think that classical music is all sunshine and lollipops and like spa music, think again. There is a lot of strong, intense opinions in the classical music landscape, and those strongest opinions tend to be from the composers themselves. So without further ado, let's get into it. start with Wagner, shall we? He probably wins the award for most frequently shaded. Bizet on Wagner. He is endowed with such insolent conceit that criticism cannot touch his heart, admitting that he has a heart, which I doubt. Robert Schumann on Wagner. He cannot write or think out four consecutive bars of beautiful or even of good music. And Robert's wife, Claire Schumann, was not silent on the matter. The most repugnant thing I have ever seen or heard in all my life basically on a composition that Wagner wrote. Wagner did have his own shade to throw though. He wasn't just sitting around idly and the shade he was throwing was at Chopin. He said, a composer for one right hand. That's actually pretty mild. <laughs> Another person who was critical of Chopin was Mendelssohn who said, a book of mazurkas by Chopin and a few new pieces of his are so mannered that they are hard to stand. Darn you, Chopin, you're being too polite. As with the cycle of life, the cycle of insults is a beautiful thing, and Chopin, of course, had his own opinions about other composers that he gladly expressed. Chopin said of Berlioz that he composes by splashing his pen over the manuscript and leaving the issue to chance. This is where Chopin and Mendelssohn uh, were buds and agreed, because Mendelssohn said about Berlioz, indifferent dribble, mere grunting, shouting and screaming back and forth. That's a nice colorful way to put it. Another composer who tops the list of most frequently shaded is Franz Liszt. Clara Schumann said it in a nice and simple way that he was a smasher of pianos. She also did elaborate on it a little bit and said, it's just meaningless noise, not a single healthy idea anymore. Everything confused, a clear harmonic progression is not to be found here any longer. Chopin also had some more criticisms up his sleeve and this one was directed at Franz Liszt. When I think of Liszt as a creative artist, he appears before my eyes rouged on stilts and blowing into Jericho trumpets fortissimo and pianissimo. Brahms had some things to say about Liszt, but we're going to circle back around to Brahms in just a minute here. He says, the compositions are getting more and more terrible. My fingers often itch to pick an argument and to write anti-Liszt. But Brahms is right up there with Wagner and Liszt in terms of receiving a lot of uh, hate from other composers. Britten on Brahms. I play through all his music every so often to see if I'm right about him. I usually find that I underestimated last time how bad he is. Now George Bernard Shaw is not a composer, but I had to include his opinion on Brahms, which is, there are some experiences in life which should not be demanded twice from any man, and one of them is listening to the Brahms Requiem. Tchaikovsky, ah, dealer of sick burns. Tchaikovsky had a lot to say about a lot of musicians, and here's what he said about Brahms. Brahms is just some chaotic and utterly empty wasteland. Whew. And also, I have played over the music of that scoundrel Brahms. What a giftless bad name here. Tchaikovsky's the only one where we had to edit out a bad name. Tchaikovsky had this to say about Mussorgsky. He likes what is coarse, unpolished, and ugly. On Richard Strauss, he says, such an astounding lack of talent has never before been united to such pretentiousness. Nice. And then Tchaikovsky on Handel. Handel is only fourth rate. He is not even interesting. Tchaikovsky wasn't the only one throwing shade at Handel. Stravinsky also had this to say about Handel's Theodora. It's beautiful and boring. Too many pieces finish too long after they end. And with Stravinsky, we enter into what I like to think of as the trio of hate. It's a beautiful trio formed by Stravinsky, Shostakovich, and Prokofiev. Prokofiev on Stravinsky. Bach on the wrong notes. Stravinsky's rebuttal. Prokofiev was the contrary of a musical thinker. He was, in fact, startlingly naive in matters of musical construction. So then we have Shostakovich who has to enter the ring and he says, I'm rather indifferent to Prokofiev's music now and listen to his compositions without any particular pleasure. But Prokofiev was not gonna let Shostakovich stand by and say that. He says, Shostakovich is a talented but somehow unprincipled composer and bereft of melodic invention. Stravinsky also has had his own thoughts on Shostakovich to complete our trio of hate. 
The style of Shostakovich's Lady Macbeth is extremely disturbing, and the score is a work of lamentable provincialism in which the music simply serves as illustration. The music plays a miserable role of illustration and in an embarrassingly miserable style. Formless, monotonous music. This is not the work of a musician, but the product of a totally a total indifference to music in the country of the Soviets. And then we just have some miscellaneous insults, like that from Beethoven, who was not one to mince words. Though I had some instruction from Haydn, I never learned anything from him. We have Ravel on Debussy. La Mer is poorly orchestrated. If I had the time, I would reorchestrate it. And this is Debussy on Grieg's writing. Bonbons stuffed with snow. Finally, Leonard Bernstein on Gershwin. The Rhapsody in Blue is not a composition at all. It's a string of separate paragraphs stuck together with a thin paste of flour and water. And there you have it, my friends, composers throwing shade. We might have to make a video about composers throwing love to each other to counterbalance this so we don't summon up too much evil in the universe. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys next time. He was, in fact, starting. Start, it's a beautiful trio formed by Shostakovich.